This is my route out. I'm along the river bottom. What is making it so distressed? And then he sees it. He sees this large. Okay, so here's the setup. I am along the Carson River and I am in Fort Churchill State Park, Northern Nevada, and we have a very frightening story from one of our viewers, his name is Brian, that I'm gonna be telling his story from along the river here, and then we're going back to camp, and this is kind of fun. We're gonna be having dinner and making it with a pie maker, cast iron pie maker over the fire, and then I'm going to be playing my phone conversation interview with Brian after that. Let's get to it. Okay, I got an owl going off over here. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> I think he's telling me it's gonna be a good night, so there we go. Get my lights all set up. So for tonight's beer, we have Black Butte Porter. I've had this before by the Deschutes Brewery. That's out of Bend, Oregon. And that is a good one. I like a porter. Makes me feel kind of fancy to be drinking a porter. Uh, yes, I think I'll have another porter. A porter would be good. And that is, oh, there's the cup right over here. Oh, that's a nice dark one, but it's really rich. Not super heavy on the bubbles either, so cheers. That is really delicious, <laughs> like that. The wind has died down too. I always am grateful for when the wind dies down, so. So in 1971 or 1972, Brian was 10 or 11 years old. He couldn't quite remember exactly which year it was. His grandfather in the early 60s had bought some land, 400 acres of land south of Victoria, Illinois, by a company called the Peabody Coal Company. This was a former strip mine. It was a really rugged area compared to the agricultural land around it. It was very flat. And his grandpa, over the years, built some cabins and improved some lakes in the bottom of some of these pits for fishing. So they stocked some fish in them. Cheers. <laughs> All right, got the, got the locals getting involved here. This was a great place for them for, for a getaway, for weekends, spent many weekends there, a lot of fishing, fossil hunting, exploring, and Brian really loved it. This particular year, July of that year, it was his birthday. It was always a special time because he would, it was a longer weekend and he could bring some friends with him and they would all hang out and do all this cool stuff in this 400 acres. In fact, when I was growing up, we had a place called the Bass Pond outside of our small town, and it was in a gravel pit. We would take our bikes and ride up to the gravel pit and put our bikes in the ditch, and then we would hike down and go fishing down here. It was really cool, it had sunfish, bass, northern, and uh, very clear and very deep. It was a lot of fun though. It was kind of our own little lake. <laughs> so this particular weekend, he had two friends and a cousin that came out to hang out with him, to enjoy his birthday. And that morning they decided to get up and go exploring. So they got all set, got their gear together, and they were gonna go to this area that Brian called the hills, these really large tailings piles. And they loved to climb on it. And once they got to the top, because it was so flat around it, they could see for miles and miles. So it was really cool for them. And so they were headed over to this area, and this one particular hill was called the hill of the hills. It was about 100 feet. And there was a really steep side to it and more of a gentle slope on the other side. 
and Brian liked to challenge himself and his friends and so they climbed up the steep side. And while they were climbing up, they were working their way up, Brian was the first one and he was really had no fear as a 10 year old. So he's going this really steep side and he's trying to beat everybody and he gets to the top, climbs up and he's kind of levels out and he can see just this long ways off. He's got a friend that's not too far behind him. He hears this cow bellowing really loud, like really distressed. And he looks to the west and down and he sees a lower hill. And on this hill is a cow making all this noise. He's looking down at this cow and he's trying to figure out what is making it so distressed. And then he sees it. He sees this large, cream-colored thing is how he described it walking from out behind this hill into this meadow at an angle away from the cow and it's walking on two feet and it's walking like a man but it's not a man it's not human it's huge Brian described it as twice as large as a cow. So if a cow was about four, four and a half feet high at the back, it was twice as big as that. Just huge. Brian screamed for his friend to come up and see this. And he was really freaked out. His friend was right behind him. And just in a moment, he was up there standing next to Brian. And they got this clear view looking down at this thing huge thing walking and his friend saw it too fortunately and because he screamed just a moment later this thing stopped and pivoted and rotated and the head didn't move and it just turned and it was looking directly at them brian said it felt like they were looking directly into each other's eyes this thing was only 100 yards away huge thing and they're 10 years old maybe 11. so this thing stood there for a moment then it turned its head to the left and it leaned its head to the right kind of looking at them like that and then it quickly pivoted and rotated and continued walking again through the meadow through some trees and down the next slope and then it was gone it disappeared and brian has said it lasted maybe 10 or 15 seconds but it felt like an eternity just this moment in time and just seeing this great being, this monster, so to speak. <laughs> and they immediately turned around and they told their friends, don't come up, don't come up. We're coming down, we have to go, we have to go. And they, the, the friends were trying to understand what the heck was going on and they tried to explain the best they could as they were hurriedly working their way down the slope and back to the cabins. And they got to the cabins and they were trying to explain what they had seen. Brian was trying to explain. And he said, we saw this monster. And he didn't have any reference point for Bigfoot or Sasquatch. There was no internet back then. There was three channels on TV, four if you count PBS, but ABC, NBC, CBS. And he had no reference for Bigfoot. And so he didn't know how else to describe it, but they saw that he described this cream colored thing that they saw. And the parents, they were less than enthusiastic about this. They were dismissive thinking, well, they're just making this up. They saw a monster from the top of the hill. Okay, <laughs> no, not really. But anyways, go on and play, we're busy. <laughs> so Brian said this event changed his life. He never went into the hills again. He's limited his outdoor recreation he says whenever he tells this story the hair on his arm goes up crazy and he's fact while I was talking to him and he was describing his encounter he said Chris the hair in my arm is going up I can just feel it this come a lot of this is coming back to me right now he did get some validation really interesting about two weeks later he was at a friend's mom's insurance office with his friend they rode their bikes and went in there talking to the mom she said hey boys i have something you might want to see she opens her drawer and she pulls out this newspaper clipping 
And it said, Illinois State Police see large creature. <laughs> the Illinois State Police saw a large cream colored creature is what the dis article described. And they described it as this large hairy man that they had seen and even on another incident a sheriff's deputy saw it as well so there was like two encounters that the police had with a cream colored large hairy upright bipedal we'll just say it sasquatch really interesting <laughs> and so that gave them validation that their story just wasn't something they made up so brian said it's been over 50 years since he had this experience but he still remembers it like it was yesterday just really clear in his head what happened that moment very crystal clear and when he told me his story it was just crystal clear i could just tell he was just recalling this memory and it it changed him he also said he felt blessed to have seen it but on the other hand he still feels scared to go into the forest. And that is our story for tonight. <laughs> I think the geese all went home, so. I don't blame them. I couldn't imagine what that would be like to actually see one of these things, but you never know. <laughs> so I am gonna hike back to camp and we're gonna do this pie now. Actually, we're making a Reuben sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. I'll take you guys along with me. We'll do a few shots on the way back. It's a little spooky in this forest. I got to say, the brush is really, really thick in some areas and it creates these like little tunnels and stuff where like animals can go sit inside there. I was almost tempted to sit inside there and do this story tonight, but I really wanted the river here, so. All right. This is my route out. I'm along the river bottom. And because, here's the trail, but because of the heavy flow they've had recently, you can see the, the water here, where it was anyways, brought all this brush in here. And so it's, the trail is pretty much obliterated, but I kind of figured out, if I get to these logs here, see this? takes me out so that is a good thing yeah kind of a spooky forest so <sighs> and there is no foliage yet it hasn't spring hasn't come yet so it's just dormant trees at the moment so This was that thick spot I could have actually gone into. It's really kind of creepy. Kind of back in here, yeah, see that? There's like a little pocket right in there. You could sit in there, get out of the wind or something. happened um in i'm just kind of trying to get you started here um okay summer of 1972 is that correct yeah yeah that's right it was over the um july 4th weekend the reason why i know mm -hmm. that my birthday is that weekend so we 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 always celebrate my birthday the same way and in about the early 1960s and uh late 
1950s, my grandfather had purchased with a bunch of their friends some land um, over by Victoria, Illinois. And it was abandoned strip mining uh, ground. And at that time, Illinois was heavy into coal mining. We had, um, at that location, when they purchased it, um, the Mecco Mine or Peabody Coal Company, they have these huge uh, diesel electric steam or diesel electric shovels that would strip the mine, sip the ground, and then get the coal out. What they would pile the tailings up, and you would have you know these huge hills. Well, as kids, we would they're closest we could get to mountains. You know, since yeah. this area is flat. Um, here, we, I mean, it's pretty much agriculture. There's not a lot of uh, farmland, or I mean, there's not a lot of timber ground. It's mainly flat. Well, in this area, it was all these trailings from um, the strip mines. So every year we go over there, 4th of July, celebrate my birthday, and have a bunch of fireworks and stuff like that. And uh, since I was probably six or seven, the kids would take off and go to the hills, which we call them. And yeah. we would go there and hike every, every chance we get. Well, so we were about 10 years old, uh, and I was with uh, two friends of mine and my cousin. And we were doing our normal thing, hiking around the hills. And there was a particular hill that we called um, Highest Peak. And this was the highest mound of tailings, probably 100 feet tall or so. And you climb on that mountain and, or that hill, and you could just see for everywhere. And, you know, we were, you know, 10 years old at that time. There was, uh, you know, kids didn't stay in the house. They were all physically doing things. So you're skinny little kids running up this tall mountain. So I was able to get up to the mountain or the hill the first, and I, I stood up there. And what caught my attention is just a little bit down from me, there was another mound, another of t tailings there and there was this cow and and this is all farming community you know everywhere so we we know cows and when yeah. a cow is bellowing just i mean if you could imagine if a if a cow could scream that's what it was doing it was screaming and it it drawed my attention to it immediately and i was looking down at it and out from the hill that that cow was standing on all of a sudden, I see this huge creature walk out. Now, this is back in 1971, 72. You know, there was no internet. There was, uh, you know, three three TV stations. We we didn't hear much. You know, the only thing that we knew of a monster was from comic books. It was either, you know, Dracula, the Wolfman, or something like that. I don't even think we knew of any creature called Bigfoot at the time. So this creature was walking out. It was cream color. And it was walking, yeah. quartering out from me, uh, from that hill where that cow was standing on. And as soon as I saw it, I screamed to my friends. And as soon as I screamed, the thing, which was walking on two legs, and yeah. it was as it was walking, um, it was kind of flexed forward a little bit and looking kind of down towards the ground. But as soon as I screamed, it stopped and it turned and looked right at me. And this thing, you know, was about 100 yards from me uh, when I was looking at it. And it stared right at me. By that time, my other friend had gotten to the top with me, and he saw it also. And this thing, when you look at, <clears throat> because of the distance it was, and me being a kid, you know, 10 or 11 years old, it was kind of hard to estimate the size. Other than that, it was probably twice the height of the cow, which you think a cow is about four feet tall. So this thing is yeah. probably at least eight or nine feet tall. But brick shoulders, and it had no neck um, like a normal, you know, cervical spine or neck in a, in a human being. But when it was looking at me, it would tilt its head to the left, and then it tilted its head to the right, and then... After it was, it was probably only lasted about 10 to 15 seconds, it turned and went back the same direction that it came. And at that time, I mean, we were in panic. I mean, seeing something like this that we could never even imagine seeing. 
Um, we got off of that mountain and hightailed it back to where everybody was located, all the adults. And we had trying to, to explain to them what we saw, and all we could really describe is we saw a monster. And we didn't say a Bigfoot or Sasquatch or anything like that. And so being kids, you know, from 10 to 13 years old, you know, they knew we were pretty shook up about something, but, you know, it never really went any further than that. So from that point, um, you know, we finished the holidays, went home, and one of the friends that we were with about two weeks later, um, she owned an uh, insurance office in our town there. We were at her office, and she handed this article to us. She goes, boys, I think you'd be interested in reading this. So we were reading the article, and it was from the uh, a newspaper down further south from where we were at. And it was dated about a week or two before what we saw on July 4th. It was in June. And it was described by the sheriff and the Illinois State Police of this large man-like creature that was cream in color. And in that, uh, at that time there, they mentioned Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Uh, prior to that, we didn't know exactly what to, what to describe it as. So, you know... Then maybe we did see something, you know, unfortunately it was, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of weeks later and time was gone. But, um, you know, when you see something like this, you know, it's made such an impression on my life because even now I'm 60, I'll be 62 this July. Every time I tell the story, you know, I, my hair stands up on my arms, I get goosebumps, you know, and it's been this long and, uh, you know, my kids, they, uh, you know, started to to get me to talk to, you know, about it more as we were at a wedding and there was two um, sheriff's deputies there. One was the groom and the best man, and, and they were wearing the, uh, one was wearing a shirt that said, I believe, and it had a picture of Sasquatch on it. So my oh. wife asked him, and then he says, oh, I have a story to tell you. And then his best man were both deputies, and they had also witnessed a Sasquatch. So that kind of brought it all up into the uh, uh, limelight again where, you know, everybody wanted me to tell my story again and things like that. But, um, you know, even now, you know, when when that happened back then, um, I was never able to really go into those hills again. Um, I was just too scared. Um, And even, you know, and I'm, I'm a you know, do a lot of hunting. I've been in Alaska and I mean hunting like that. But I'm always a little bit nervous, even even now. And in my house, I have a nine and a half foot uh, Alaskan brown bear that I had shot several years ago. And, you know, I keep telling, you know, my daughter or something, they said she wants to see a Bigfoot after I tell her this. And I said, you know, that bear is big, but that Bigfoot was bigger. You don't want to see one of these yeah. things. And, uh, but yeah, it's really made an impression, um, on my life. Uh, and, you know, through my high school years, as you know, you were able to get more information. I did a little bit more, um, you know, research on it. And I lived in Northern California for some time, but even up there, you know, I was really hesitant to go out and, you know, the forest or, or, you know, any kind of exploring just because of the fact that, you know, you, you think of, Northern California is the home of Bigfoot, and you don't think of central Illinois as, you know, having the terrain and the environment that uh, Bigfoot would be seen in, but I think it was most likely passing through. Yeah. Wow. And so after that, they they saw the article that was a, a friend, the friend's mom showed you the article, correct? That's correct, yes. And so did the friend's mom because she understood your story. Did she believe you guys then? Oh, yeah. I think they all started to believe us that there was something there uh, because what we described to them, you know, a couple of weeks before, that is exactly what was in the article that the state police had described. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's just like... One of the... It's like confirmation, I mean, from authorities not just 
you know, a crazy neighbor or something. <laughs> exactly right, you know. And, you know, for the, the fact that this, the Sasquatch was cream color, you know. Yeah. It, it's just so unusual. Um, now, I think, you know, even though I see, you know, the different um, – stories about them and you know you just never you'll see some reddish ones but never a cream colored one and uh you know and and it was several years when i first saw the roger patterson's film and saw his um video of the bigfoot work walking you know and that was it just struck me as that's exactly how the one that i saw walks and wow, you know, in his yeah. video, especially with the definition now, I mean, you can see the underlining musculature uh, in in that creature that he filmed. It was just tremendous. Now with the technology we have to improve the video, yeah, uh, they've been yeah, able to stabilize that footage, and then they can zoom in and, and then uh, sharpen sharpen it somewhat and and isolate it and then see the uh, you know yeah, the movements and stuff. So right. Yeah. So with this cream colored one that you saw when it turned to look at you can you describe the face like yeah um, how, the hair and what the face looked like with the hair around it and stuff yeah the face you know the whole thing was cream i guess you could like a, a um a dirty yellow um that's what it will look and when it turned you know uh. because of the fact you know it had such broad shoulders and the the area of the skull there was no real clear definition of a of a neck like we we think in a human being and then when it turned and it looked at us you know it did lean its head to the right and to the left um his the facial features you know it looked pinkish around the face mm. um you know it was, it was ways off i couldn't really see you know real clear definition other than it was kind of pinkish it looked a little bit more you know it was definitely not the same color as as the the fur uh, from the rest of the body. Yeah, but it sounds like a lighter uh, version, almost albino, compared to, because a it, lot of them, the, I've heard, are black, and then their face can be kind of a, a grayish, leathery kind of look to it, as opposed to a pinkish, which would make sense with a cream color, which is, you know, close to a white. Right. Um, an off-white yeah. or, or whatever. So, wow. That, that, yeah. And that's and, almost like, back then, you remember the... Uh, was it the um, what was that Christmas show that the kids would be, we'd always watch with the abominable snowman? Oh yeah, uh, Rudolph the Reindeer. Uh, Rudolph, yeah, Rudolph, yeah. wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. The abominable it was snowman. <laughs> Cream color. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that was kind of like uh, for kids back then. It was like an early an introduction to yeah. There's kind of this monster that's large fur colored and kind of scary and he's or cream colored and uh lives in the wilderness somewhere <laughs> yeah exactly um uh, yeah we're... so uh, you know and especially now back or back then you know we didn't have the information access that we have no to, you know the internet now and it, you know it took forever before we even you know was able to try to get some information about this thing yeah yeah i was talking to a somebody um, who had a, a story from the, that time period, and then uh, sometime later they saw In Search Of, and then they saw the Patterson-Gimlin on In Search Of, and that's kind of the only place you could see that when a show like that would you know, show that footage because it wasn't as readily available on the internet. Right. That, you know, so you'd be kind of happenstance to catch something like that and see it, like, oh, my gosh, I saw the show, and they had a segment on this thing called Bigfoot, and here was some footage and, and stuff. So now you can binge watch. <laughs> oh, I know. It. That, that's thing. true. You know, when I remember the first time I saw it, you know, and it's like, oh, my gosh, that's that's what we saw. That's exactly what we saw. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. And so, yeah, so when you're on, out in the woods or you're thinking about going out in the forest and, and from, from your experience, what are you feeling – um, that makes you hesitant or, uh, you know, any concern? Yeah, right now, you know, most of the time when I go out hunting, you know, you you always go out when it's dark and, and things like that. It, it's just, you just have a, a little bit of an uneasy feeling. 
And, um, you know, and I, I know the chances of seeing this again in my area here is probably like one in the Powerball. I mean, it's just next to impossible. Uh, I will ever have that experience again. But still, um, it, it gives me a little bit of hesitation. But more so when I was in Northern California, uh, I think it gave me a little bit more of a uneasiness there uh, just because it's so vast out here. Because in, in, in our area here, you know, if you're up 20 feet, you can see seven miles. You know, it's flat and there's nothing here. I mean, even though we have tons of deer here, um, you can get out in the woods, you never see them, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's just, so, you know, something's out there. I mean, granted, the chance of you ever seeing it. It's just, it's that uneasy feeling, just kind of the uneasy feeling. That's the only way I can describe it. Sure, that that makes sense. Well, I'm glad you're able to still go out and enjoy hunting and do the things that you'd like to do, and your oh, experience yeah. wasn't so traumatic. <laughs> that you oh, sure, yeah, it was experience. in the beginning, but yeah, as I yeah, got yeah. older, I, I realized that. So <laughs> that's totally understandable that you'd have some hesitancy to, uh, you know, when you're out there. You may see something because you know better. <laughs> you know yeah, what you exactly. saw. <laughs> oh, I, you know I can't. You you nobody can tell me what I saw wasn't real. It, it's it's yeah. turned such an impression into my my brain that yeah, you know, I, I I repeat this story and and every time I do, the hair stands up on my arms and I get goosebumps. <laughs> like the first time I said it. Yeah, yeah, and I've I've heard where people try to tell other people what they saw and say, well, what you saw was a black bear walking on two feet and it was maybe a light colored black bear or something. Or you, they, they try to explain what you saw to you and you're like, you got to be like, uh, no, that's uh, no, that's not true. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> you can't describe what I saw for me <laughs> and re yeah, redefine it. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, yeah. that's uh, well, good. Well, good job um, explaining all that. And, uh, I, I really appreciate that, and it's it's interesting the impact this has had on you um, for all these years, and you still get that some feelings about it when you just when you talk about it and stuff. Oh, I know because you know it's it's you, you tell people you know you, you got to be careful because some people <laughs> think you're crazy, but you know when you explain to them and the fact that no, this happened not a week ago or not a year ago, it was. 50 years ago, <laughs> and, you know, I was 10 years old or 11 years old when I saw this thing, and, uh, yeah, and then, you know, they say, oh, yeah, we see the hair on your arm standing up, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, kind of hard to act that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you got your hair, arm hair is trained in practicing that to trick everyone, oh, that's great, though, all right, Brian, yeah. well, I appreciate talking to you. And uh you bet, tell Chris. Story. Glad you can freely talk about it and and uh um you've got some people around you that understand and and you're not <laughs> seen as some kind of crazy hoaxer or something, but uh Oh that, yeah, that's yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a quite a quite a story though, especially for for kids to see that without yeah. the parents, you know. Oh, you know, so. that that's it because I mean you know, we're ten, I mean, ten, you know, I remember when my kids were 10 years old, you know, I would never let them go run around like I did, you know, especially. Uh, yeah. Nowadays. I grew up the same way. Yeah, we had a, a, a county park reserve with like five lakes in it and forests and hills and open, you know, meadows and stuff. And we would go out there by ourselves throughout the year in Minnesota. So we would snowshoe in this winter and then we would hike in the summer and bike and and we would be out there for you know all day <laughs> exploring and messing around as kids and and i don't think kids do that kind of thing anymore so we'd have to hike no, just to get to the edge of this park reserve we'd have to hike about a, a good mile and then we'd hike for miles within this park reserve <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate your time. Hey, Chris, and, uh, you bet. Yeah, and I appreciate you watching my channel and stuff. So. Oh, it's great. You know, we watch it. You know, it, it's we we have everybody over, and it's like, hey, there's a new episode. <laughs> so we sit there. 
And then All I have right. to tell my story after we hear your story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. all right, well, that's great. Well, well have a great day. Hey, I appreciate uh, it, Chris. Day. You too. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys, that's our story for tonight, and thanks for hanging out with me. That was fun, fun to be camping again. If you have your own story, please send it to basecampchris2 at gmail.com. We'll see what we can do, and uh, that would be great. And... Like and subscribe and all that fun. But thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking.